So now that we have a little bit of gold left over, I think we should, we're should we gonna send this gift, even though it's really expensive, to Lady Paramount Arwen to increase her opinion of us by 44. So that brings her up to negative 71. Not super great, um, but yeah. That's currently the situation we're at. Look, Prince Zachary did not turn out well. Incompetent Stuart. Good lord. Two more years before they can marry. Matrilineal, so, matrilineally, so he'll come to our court. That'll be good. Keep him close. Uh, I'm not going to command this guy to end his war. How's he doing in this war? He is losing a little bit. I can go into high... Ooh, is, is there a plot to kill me? Yeah, look at that. Lionel Spevins. End your plot, my friend. No? Okay. Why can't I arrest him? That's weird. Hmm. You would think I would have, you know, righteous cause to imprison him, I guess because he's not a direct vassal of mine. <laughs> oh well, who who has joined this plot? Uh, somebody somebody has joined. Harwin Nori. Why do you hate me? Oh, okay, you're friends with her too. Interesting. I can ask him to leave court. Speaking of which, we do need to go through our court and purge. We need to go through and, and purge our court of all of the, the people who don't have congenital traits. The more research I've been doing on this, the more effective I think we're going to be of you know who stays in court who doesn't um so yeah i think it's a good time for us to go through and, and purge and see who can stick around and who needs to gtfo
took care of all of that. We have purged our court enough, I think, to invite a brand new set of uh, like courtiers to come in. Those will start flooding in here in just a little bit. I'll marry them all together and hopefully they produce a bunch of babies and all that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully we get some good ones out of this one. Uh, like I said, some of the research that I'm doing, I'm actually working on a video that kind of gives a tutorial on all of this and uh, how uh, how traits are inherited in CK2 and how to you know ensure that you have the highest chance of having the most successful uh, quote-unquote breeding program in in the game so um, I'm not going to give away a lot of information on that but the more research I'm doing uh, the more I'm able to kind of refine what we're doing here in the woods so that helps um, and the reason I'm not sending any men to the wall is because this war is actually against the tyranny of Commander Esso the Mutilator um, who it's the second one people don't like him so I mean, I'm not surprised he's in this war in the first place. I hate it that he's the, you know, the Lord Commander, and they're fighting wars against him, and so he calls on the realm to come help him. Um, and I can't deny it, or else my vassals hate me for denying a call for war from the Night's Watch. Uh, but he's also up against a new King Me on the Wall, by the looks of it. Uh, let's look at realms. Yeah, it's not a unified kingdom beyond the wall, but it is a king beyond the wall, nonetheless. So, uh, Castle Black is currently sieged down by Commander Denyo. Uh, that's the guy he's fighting against, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so Castle Black has been sieged down. Uh, the <laughs> wildlings are right over here, and they're currently fighting. It's 6% war score in favor of them. Honestly, uh, unless I can fight against them, there's no reason to send men north of the wall, or to the wall. And if the wall falls, like, that sucks for the north, but honestly, we're okay, if that makes any sense. Let's go back to this view, so hopefully we can get a good look. How many men can I raise up from the Stormlands? 4,000? That sucks. Um, yeah, like I said, we're going to have to take care of, you know, the Stormlands at some point, but that's not going to be... That's not for right now. For right now, we're, we're focusing on making, you know, making the Kingdom of the Woods a great place but also a um, you know a nice uh, location for all of our lords and lady paramounts uh, to get along with us I think I think that helps so yeah it's always <laughs> it, it's it's an interesting thing I like I said I don't know how I'm going to deal with this situation because she definitely hates me. Her opinion is super low, but that's okay. Non-aggression pact, we're fine. Let's watch all these courtiers start to roll in. A lot of these guys are already married. I don't think they're bringing any kids with them, though. Ah, a couple of them are, by the looks of it. Allowing it to go through. Blah, blah, blah. The wars between the great houses of the woods have ended. Yes, I will reappoint the old council. No, we're not going to form the kingdom of the trident. So that's good. Everything looks like it's going back to normal. For the most part, anyways. Betrothed can marry. I don't think I set this up. I think, <laughs> I think these people came to our court. Okay, so our, let's look at our court really quick. Back up to 74. That's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, I'm trying to look and see where we ended. I uh, know this guy's new. He's already married, though. And he has two kids. Neither of whom are quick. So that sucks. Let's see. Who else is new? That's that guy. Oswell, he's quick. He's not married. Let's see if we can arrange a marriage for him. Uh, let's marry him to this girl. She's quick. Matrilineal, because well, why not? Uh, Peter Brook, he's a genius. His wife is not. Let's see. They have kids. 
One of them is a genius. Good. Who can I betroth you to? This is pretty much my process. Just if you're if you're new to all of this, this is pretty much the process that we go about doing these things. Um, let's let's betroth her to Atreus. Let's get some some genius up in House Bear. Okay. Let's go down. Where are they? That's her right there. Jonathor. He's 17. He's a genius. It's a range of maybe a marriage for him. Uh, what about a betrothal? So let's arrange a betrothal instead. Who do we have? Nobody with congenital traits. Okay. Do we have any unmarried female rulers? We do. Rayella Mud. She's pregnant, although she's unmarried. Oh, she is married. Guess I forgot to make that a criterion there. Uh, let's see. This girl could use a marriage. Awesome. They'll take it. That's good. So now we need to go back to my court. Like I said, this is pretty much my, my process. I go through and dish out. These guys have any kids? They don't yet. She is pregnant though, so we'll see what comes from that. Let's see. She's married. That's good. Oh, I just set that up. Quentin. Quick, unmarried. Let's arrange a marriage. Uh, let's go back over here. Let's see who else we have. Oh, she's widowed, so she won't take any offers. Okay. And he's a little bit on the older side. Hmm. I mean, 34 is a little bit too old to be betrothing him to the young ones. Was that Quentin? Yeah, it was. Let's do between him and Jenna Barrows. Adam Hall, he's been in our court. William is a genius, he's 31. Let's do between him and Leanna Hall. And then Taryn is a genius, he's 29. Hmm. Don't know what to do with him. Let's see. Who needs to be married? This is always the hardest part, is finding these correct, you know, avenues to go in. Awesome. There we go. So she's attractive. She'll, she'll actually come to our court by the looks of it, because she's a courtier. And that'll help. That'll give us... Uh, you know another congenital trait. There is one other thing that I needed to look for Let's actually load up our filters 
Let's do men only who are, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, that's good. We need to see if there's any more formidable fighters. There is brilliant commander, formidable fighter, organizer, wow. He's an Andal, but he's a, he's a courtier in Pentos. Invite to court, bring it on my friend. Awesome. So that helps that. This guy's a former slave. Okay, so that'll help because he has better stats than our... He has better stats than our current. Awesome. Uh-oh. Wants to replace and become regent. Yikes. Tristan Snowbear. Interesting. Okay, so we need to we need to rearrange our council a little bit. Leon Flowers is no longer going to be our uh, master at arms. Instead, it's going to be William right here. And actually, that actually frees up frees us up a little bit because now I can ask, where is he at? Leon Frostarm. He's going to be a little upset that he's that he's been fired from the council, but his stats were so low, I don't think he was really helping anything. So, I think I think his ability to like train a kid comes from that martial stat. The higher that is, the higher percent chance he has of doing that. However, it makes it so that we can go into our council, minor titles, and our uh, where is it? Our bodyguards Leon Flowers. So there's that. We can actually also change that. Oh no, I can't because they're working on, she's working on that. Okay, so it looks like we have Child's Combat Prowess improves almost 20% per year. So that that's a pretty good, op, that's a pretty good chance. I'm no statistician, but that's a pretty good chance that by the time Young Alix turns 16. I mean, that's another eight years at 20% a year. I'd say the odds are pretty good he's going to end up as a formidable fighter. The other thing is that we need a. Uh, let's see. We can always place him under. Lionel Redhorn who has good traits, good stats, and is a formidable fighter. The only problem is that he's Faith of the Seven. So that gives the chance for us, for him to become Faith of the Seven. But it also gives him a chance to become a squire slash knight. So I think we're gonna go ahead and do that since he's already a skilled fighter. And once he becomes formidable, if he becomes formidable, um, We'll, we'll transfer him back, I think. Because that stat alone will be great, but we also need to work on all the rest of his stats and traits. So, And I want some, some semblance of control over that. So maybe by the time he's 12 and those childhood traits start to become adult traits, maybe we can transfer him back over to us. I think that that's in our best interest. It looks like our Castellan, our Hand of the King, Lord Tristan Snowbear, has grayscale. It seems the old gods do not favor him. So after much thought and patience and reminiscing, the High King of Valor has approached his bastard son, Ned, and uh, has explained the situation to him. You see, years ago, when Valor was uh, a young man and handed the king in Bear Hall, a witch by the name of Amara the Wicked was um, set up on the god's eye, or the bear eye, in the middle of the lake. A holy place filled with weirwood trees. She offered to teach young Valor, how to hone his skills in exchange for 
his uh, his his seed, we'll say. And uh, much to his chagrin, Valor neither learned how to uh, how to use his powers more effectively, and also he ended up with a bastard son, Ned Rivers. So Ned is uh, is now the revealed full bastard son of the High King Valor. And uh, he has a role to play in the near future. He has a role to play. But first, there's more to be revealed. This was but the first step on a long journey to understanding Ned's true purpose. Just doing a little quick check in on Prince Alix. Still eight years old, but he is already willful, which is fantastic. Ambitious, brave, authoritative. Fantastic. Um, and he's a squire now, too. So that's good. That now, at this point, he could go back and once he's an adult, he can buy a knighthood or, you know, he can uh, find somebody who can knight him. So that's great. He actually already has all of that in hand. And uh, just another further update on uh, family to the north. Lord Tristan has grayscale, but also his son has grayscale. Uh, so interesting times up in Moat Kaelin. Wow, even further news. Our Hand of the King, Lord Tristan Snowbear, has died of his grayscale. And his son, the two-year-old Lord Adric, who also has grayscale, has inherited the Lordship of Moat Kaelin. So it's time to select a new Hand of the King. And I think it's important for us to choose somebody with, uh, with some influence, some ability, but also one of our uh, one of our dear and close friends, uh, Lord Paramount Riger Roman. Doesn't have the greatest stewardship, but has a fantastic diplomacy skill. Actually, I'm going to make him Master of Laws, now that I'm thinking about it. Instead, for stewardship's sake, we're going to choose Lord Quinton of House Hammerhorn. Let's take a look at our Master of, of Laws. Carlin Flowers is currently occupying that seat, but he's not the best one for the job. Right here. Um, I think, yeah, I'm gonna have you just perform statecraft for the time being. If that if that helps. Um, if you're performing statecraft, that means we can uh, we can have some improved opinions, that kind of thing, which is always good. Maybe it would actually be for our benefit for me to send him directly to Lady Ravella. Um, we'll have to see exactly how all of that goes, but, um, I think we still have a claim on the neck. It needs to be a landed person. Uh, we're currently allied in that war, so we can't declare war on him. I can't even see what claims I have, really. It would have to be the high, like the high lordship of the neck. Hmm. We'll have to see. Oh, hold on, that actually gave me a list. Okay, so this actually allows me to see the list of what I, I can declare war, even though I can't necessarily declaim it. Uh, we can actually de jure claim this area. The, the bite, the fingers, and the sisters. But we can't claim the neck yet. Okay. I want us to be able to claim Silver Reed and then this area. Um... But, Greywater Watch is going to be the one thing that we're going to have a hard time getting our hands on, I believe, anyways. 